Ezeola Nzale. President William Ruto has once again stated that the court injunctions against the affordable housing program will not deter his administration from implementing the Kenya Kwanzaa pet project. Speaking in Bungoma County where he commissioned one such project, Ruto directed contractors to continue with the construction work. Chamutai Goin reports. The president was on a development tour of Bungoma County, where he graced the handing over ceremony of Naitiri SA Township Primary School. A school rebuilt by the Mpesa Foundation before proceeding to commission the construction of two markets in Naitiri and Webuye. <laughs> And despite the court seemingly slowing down the wheels of the affordable housing program, the president was unrelenting in his quest to push on with his pet project, laying yet another foundation stone for a 3,000-unit project in Kandui. The Constitution of Kenya, Section 25 of the Constitution of Kenya, mandates me to explain if there is a problem if we cannot raise money to do housing. We have a plan on how to raise money for housing. I have no explanation to give. This program must move forward for the benefit of millions of Kenyans across the country in terms of employment and in also making sure that ordinary Kenyans can also access affordable living. President Ruto took time to allay fears by contractors that stoppage in deductions of the levy could stall the implementation of the plan. Contractors wote wanaofanya kazi kwa mambo ya affordable housing. Pamoja na vijana wote na wale wanafanya kazi katika mpango huu. Karibu watu elfu miyamoja telathini. Mimi nataka ni waambie waendele kazini. Kwa sababu hii mpango inaendelea. Mpaka pale tutamalizana na mambo kule kotini. Ile vijana ambaye watandiku hapa. Mafundi, watu ya mukono, watu ya stima, ni vijana wa hapa bugoma hapa. Tumekubaliana. Contractor asileta watu hapa, sindio? Contractor akuja na watu watatu peke yake. Yeye mwenyewe, ijinia wake na mutu ya kulipa watu. Ile kitu tunawambia vijana. Muendele kwa watulivu na waaminifu kwa serikali. Kwa sababu huyu rais wetu ni rais ambaye anaweka ahadi zake. The President and Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nakumicha also made a case for the Social Health Insurance Fund that is set to replace NHIF. Nimetembea tembea huku nikifanya public participation. Na nikauliza nyinyi mkienda hospitali na vile nimesikia kuingine. Wao wanamwandikia dawa wanamwambia mununue nje. Hao wako na kadi ya NHIF lakini wanawaambia ati mpaka walazwe ndio watumie ni ukweli ama uongo. Wakienda na wako na ugonjwa ile sugu umesema ya kansa, ya sukari, wanauli wanaambiwa waongezee pesa kwa NHIF ni ukweli hapa ni uongo. Sasa mheshimiwa rais in a week's time sheria mimi nitakuwa nimepeleka kwa kamati ya delegated authority. Kuanzia tare moja mwezi wa tatu. Iyo mambo yote mimi nimepewa ruhusa na rais ninaenda kumaliza. Sasa wewe hutaki mtu mdogo apatiwe bima na serikali. Utaki huyu mwingine apunguziwe kutoka 500 mpaka 300. Utaki tuwe na hazina maalum. Umeenda kotini kupinga na ule mwenye kupenda kupinga kotini ako na insurance comprehensive. Mtoto yake ako na kazi. Wale and following the court's declaration of the housing levy as unconstitutional and having declined to give the government authority to continue with the deductions, minority leader Opio Wandai has since written to the National Assembly Speaker demanding a refund of monies already deducted from the MPs and other Parliamentary Service Commission staff. Chemutai Goin, Citizen TV. Earlier on, Nairobi Senator Edwin Sifuna and his Tana River counterpart, Danson Mungatana, differed on the controversial housing levy. While Mungatana maintained that the program aims to uplift Kenyans, Senator Sifuna accused the president of not being truthful, stating that the program is meant to benefit people with close links to the government. Last week, the Court of Appeal declined to stay a high court judgment, which declared the housing levy unconstitutional.
We are not in parliament. How can we be parliamentary? We are on TV. We are not in parliament. King is not here to protect you. We have to speak the way we speak. This is not parliament. I can say. Who says I cannot say? This is not your show. It is his show. Let me finish first. Let me finish first. How can you say this? It is the English language. If something is not true, it's called a lie. This is not parliament. In my custom. Let's see. You this don't is not talk to elders custom? or people. Okay. Pokomo custom. The, we are not here under Pokomo are, custom. Or no. We are not here talk under Pokomo respect. custom. No. Talk with yes. respect. Let's have some talk with respect. What, what, what I want to say here. This is okay. not a public rally of what audience. What you can't come here and start calling the president lying. If you want us to operate, the president is not a Pokomo. The president is not a Pokomo. He's not an elder. He's not an elder. Okay, Mungatana, hold on. No, Sifuna. Let not call us here under Pokomo custom law. Correct. So let him take Pokomo custom to Marilo, back to Garsen. Uh, I was not going to sit and listen to Ruto's lies so, uh, as an elected and, official, and so I saying, chose to stay away from that debate. So, uh, but I'm saying, the point Trevor, that I am making you need in terms to of publicly correct okay. the way we use our language it, here, we are before the perception. public. The courts, the Court of Appeal, did not say that this is unconstitutional. The housing levy is unconstitutional. The court was very clear. It was saying that it was introduced through the Finance Act without a proper legal framework having been set. And that is why the Affordable Housing Bill uh, 2023, which is being uh, processed now, would be the correct place for us to debate and bring out all the ideas. You have a person in the executive saying he will disobey court orders. He has already disobeyed the will of the people, saying they will proceed with this thing anyway. What is in it for him? I will not be surprised, Trevor. If you go and do a deep dive into this particular project, you will find the suppliers of this uh, material for construction is his friends, if not himself. He will find he's the one bringing cement. You will find he's the one bringing uh, uh, the construction steel. And some of these people... Yeah, just talking here, when the truth about this housing project comes out, all of these people will be put to shame. All right, that was earlier on on Debrek this morning. You know, a section of religious leaders drawn from the Christian and Muslim faith have presented a petition in Parliament pushing for an immediate inquiry into what they term as the proliferation of the LGBTQ agenda in the country. The clergy claim that there has been a well choreographed and well financed plan to fight laws prohibiting homosexuality by persons purporting to represent the rights of the LGBTQ community. The religious leaders have also pledged their support for the Family Protection Bill 2023 sponsored by Hobo Bay Town MP Peter Kaluma, which seeks to ban LGBTQ-related activities and campaigns. Safin Acheng Oma has more. The divide over Kenya's debate on the LGBTQ community continues to get wider with a section of religious leaders drawn from both the Christian and Muslim faith being the latest to express their reservations with what they term as a threat to the law moral, religious, and cultural principles. The clergy, who met Thursday morning in Nairobi, presented a petition in Parliament seeking an immediate inquiry into what they describe as the proliferation of the LGBTQ agenda in the country. The common thread through all these attempts throughout the world has been their claim that there is discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity which is not recognized in Kenya and in Africa. The petition that was signed by representatives from over 70 non-governmental and religious groups states that there is a deliberate attempt by supporters of the LGBTQ rights to have laws prohibiting homosexuality declared unconstitutional, even as they criticized the Supreme Court ruling that upheld the freedom of association for the LGBTQ community. The Supreme Court, in the case of NGO Boot versus Eric Guitari, they issued the decision on 24th February last year, overstretched its mandate in holding that the right to equality before the law uh, would not be advanced if uh, people who purported to be having a different sexual orientation were not allowed to associate in Kenya. They have thrown their weight behind the Family Protection Bill of 2023, sponsored by Homa Bay Town Member of Parliament Peter Kaluma, which seeks to ban homosexuality, same-sex unions and LGBTQ activities. This bill in summary will define who is a woman, who is a man, 
what is sex, what is gender, what is male, what is female. So that uh, nobody should be struggling to define what a woman is. We would want to support strongly the Karuma Bill. Many times we have been accused as churches for not speaking, but when we speak our voice is not heard or is not uh, publicized. Therefore today we want to stand and support this bill. They have raised concern over alleged sneaking of LGBTQ agenda in study material used in the Kenyan curriculum and the international basic education curricula, singling out grade four books, which they claim contain content on gay relationships. In their petition, the religious leaders want parliament to task cabinet secretaries of education, health, foreign affairs and labor and social protection and the Inspector General of Police to confirm the measures they are taking on sneaking of the LGBTQ agenda into the Kenyan and international curriculum. The Ministry of Health's position on the definition of sexual health and rights, the proliferation of foreign actor funding and lobbying on LGBTQ matters, as well as the enforcement of the provisions of the penal code that prohibit homosexual conduct in Kenya. Safin Acheng Oma, Citizen TV. Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya, Jackson Olesapit, says that churches will not be used as platforms to sanitize ill-gotten wealth from politicians and other congreg uh, congregants. Sapit spoke hours after religious leaders held a consultative meeting with the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission chairperson, Bishop David Oginde, to discuss ways that two institutions can collaborate to fight corruption in the country. The religious leaders also undertook to engage their congregations in civil and morality sensitization conversations against the vice. We are not going to use uh, the pulpit as a place where politicians come and champion uh, their divisive rhetoric and they talk. The church cannot close doors to anybody, so whoever wants to come and worship. But what we are saying, we are segregating the pulpit side from the congregant pews. Uh, uh, it's not a place of cleaning ill-gotten money that uh, through the church then uh, we are able to sanitize and make them uh, you know, look better uh, because they, they came through the church. We have had a very, very fruitful consultation and we uh, have experienced very good support uh, from the church and they have uh, promised to stand with us as we stand against this vice of corruption in the country. And they have also given us insight and wisdom on uh, some things that we could consider doing and partnering together with the church and with the general religious community. Because we recognize that uh, as the work that we are doing would also require divine intervention. The High Court decision to order an immediate recruitment of new IABC commissioners has exposed the constitutional vacuum that the talks between Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa created in the name of a political truce. In her decision, High Court Judge Mugure Thande said political expediency should not override the constitution. Constitutional lawyers say the country faces a constitutional crisis at a time when IABC should have been concluding the review of constituency boundaries whose 12 year window lapses Next month, Stephen Leto reports. High Court Judge Mugure Thunder directed that the current IBC selection panel moves with speed and immediately recruits new IBC commissioners, including their chair. The process was put on hold following the constitution of the bipartisan talks, where both Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa fronted talks teams, seeking to find, among others, the best formula to replace Austin and retired IBC commissioners. But the High Court judge said, quote, I reject the notion that the political question doctrine should override the very explicit constitutional provisions and that the prevailing circumstances should be allowed to infringe on the rights enshrined in the Constitution. Justice Thunder further said in her ruling that the intervention of this court is therefore justified more so because the bipartisan talks are, to the best of our knowledge, not anchored in the either the Constitution or the law. The High Court's decision brought about by a case filed by Aden Mohammed who claimed that failure to recruit IBC commissioners in time had violated the rights of constituents who were to hold by elections, for instance, Banisa constituency. The MP died in March last year. Already a constitutional crisis. IBC, as one of the independent institutions, has um, 
an ongoing mandate to mediate political processes. One of them is to conduct by elections. Another one is to review boundaries. Um, and these are ongoing processes. They are not linked to uh, a general election. It was a mistake actually to disband IBC without a plan for reconstituting um, a new one. Political pundits argue that it was a bad idea to allow disbandment of the IBC without a laid down framework to have new commissioners in office. Remember, uh, there is a constituency that does not have an MP at the moment. I think it's called Banisa, uh, somewhere in Mandera also. Um, and the people of Banisa have a right to be represented in parliament continuously. They have not been represented for well over a year now. Nobody, nobody in this country has mandate to disinherit me from the, or to deny me the right to representation. IBC is required to have started the process. The delimitation of boundaries which is required under law to be done uh, at least 10 years but not later than 12 years. Now 10 years uh, came in the year 2022 but the law allowed us up to 12 years which now expires in March of 2024. So in terms of uh, the crisis that would then ensue is that there would be a lacuna in law where delimitation has not been done and their constituencies, which may cease to exist. Some constituencies had been ring fenced for the period and were to cease existing after the boundaries review. On the 23rd of June, IBC, in its boundaries review plan, increased the population quota to 164,015, having divided the population at the time 47.5 million with a stipulated 290 constituencies. The constituencies were saved under the law were about 30 constituencies, including uh, Odaya is one of them, I think Daragua is one of them, and a number of other constituencies. It means then that we cannot plan for them, the government cannot allocate money to them, you cannot uh, appropriate resources for CDF and other planning things in terms of infrastructure, roads, and other things. That is the immediate constitutional crisis that I foresee. The National Dialogue Committee report had laid down a framework on the recruitment of the IBC team, but the document and is still gathering dust in Parliament. Stephen Leto, Citizen TV. A petition seeking to remove Chief Justice Martha Kome from office has been filed with the Judicial Service Commission. The petitioner Michael Kojo Otieno claims that the Chief Justice failed to follow the law in appointing members of the Tax Appeal Tribunal. Otieno claims that Kome discriminated against persons who applied to be members of the tribunal and burdened Kenyan taxpayers with an inclusion of two more members who were not budgeted for. Seth Olale has more. Chief Justice Martha Koome faces a legal castle against Soma Bay resident Michael Kojo Otieno, who claims that the CJ violated the constitution in appointing members of the tax appeal. <laughs> In the petition, Oteno argues that while appointing persons to serve at the tax appeal tribunal, the judge failed to be honest in execution of powers conferred to high by the tax appeal tribunal act based on powers conferred to the judge as a judicial officer. The petitioner further states that the actions of the Chief Justice in appointing members more than the stipulated requirement violated Section 4B of the Tax Appeal Tribunal Act. That one clearly indicates that if you've appointed more people than the expected number, then definitely you want to have power to rule over them. And that the actions of the Chief Justice in the appointment of the Tax Appeal Tribunal are indeed illegal, null and void, and hence unfit to hold public office. The membership of the Tax Appeals Tribunal consists of the chairperson and not less than 15 members and not more than 20 other members of the tribunal, out of which not less than five of those members and not more than nine ought to be advocates of the High Court. 
According to JSC, Advocate Chelugat Edwin Kiprono's notice of resignation was received by the Commission on 10th May 2023. Kiprono was appointed member of the National Police Service Commission, while Ali Tanvir Mohsin tendered his resignation on 8th July 2022. Subsequently, the Tribunal Secretary and CEO Anwai Vera Gidinji tendered her resignation with effect from 23rd October 2023. Seth Olale, Citizen TV. Now, police in Kisumu have launched a manhunt for seven suspects who escaped from Koru police station on Wednesday evening. According to a police report, nine remandees overpowered a police officer manning the cell. They had been locked in. The officer had opened the door for one of the inmates who requested for assistance to answer the call of nature. And as Laura Tino reports, two of the suspects have been rearrested and are expected to face fresh charges of escaping from lawful custody. Mohoroni Sub-County Police Commander Joshua Nyasimi said that of the 10 remandees held at Koro Police Station, nine overpowered a police constable and made away. The 10 had been brought in from the Kodiaga prison remand and had been presented before Tamu Law Courts on Wednesday. However, as they awaited their transfer, one of them requested to use the washrooms. As they were returning one of uh, the, 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 the remandees from the south, they had already handicapped him, and unfortunately, what happened, those who were inside, they punked the door, hit the officer, and they threw him down, and they managed to escape from, from custody. Police expended nine rounds of ammunition in the air as the remandees made their way into a nearby sugarcane plantation. Those who are still at large include Dennis Omao Cheng, who was facing charges of attempted robbery with violence, Weekly for Diambo, who was facing charges of robbery with violence, Colin Somondi and Boru Oteno Olo, who are remanded for the offense of stealing, Peter Oteno and Charles Ocheng, who are remanded for the offense of assault, and Gideon Rotich, who was remanded for the offense of threatening his aged parents. Salenda, immediately the nearest police station, all come back to the station where you run away from. If you feel you cannot, then go to the local chiefs, surrender yourself there. Two other remandees identified as Eric Ocheng and Mike Angel were rearrested on Wednesday and are assisting police with investigations. Laura Otino, Citizen TV. Investigations into the death of Kakamega Senator Boni Halwale's farmhand have now been taken over by the homicide department of the DCI. The farmhand Moi Amukune died after allegedly being gored by a bull he had been looking after. The burial of the late has also been postponed pending the conclusion of the investigations, as Brenda Wanga now reports. <laughs> At the home of the late Kizito Moi Amukune, <laughs> burial preparations have ground to a halt. The deceased was said to be buried yesterday, but that is not to be, not until answers to emerging questions about how he met his death are provided through investigations. The burial was withheld for some time so as to give the police humble time to carry out those fire investigations about allegations that the deceased could have been murdered. That delay in burial has the family members of the deceased angered. They say they are satisfied that their kin's death was an accident and just want to lay him to rest. <laughs> The late Kizito is reported to have met his death in what police now say are unclear circumstances. <laughs> It is alleged that he was gored to death by a bull in Nasio that he had been taking care of for years. Inacio, a bullfighting champion, is said to have attacked its caretaker, killing him instantly.
The bull was later speared to death by Kakamega Senator Boni Halwale, its owner. Halwale has defended the decision to kill the bull. Katika mila ya waluya, ngombe kikauka bin Adam, huwa hatuichinji, huwa tunaiuwa. Tuna tafauti kati ya kuchinja ngombe na kuuwa ngombe. DCI officers have been to the home of the senator, visited the scene of the accident as they gather evidence that will help unravel the mystery behind this death. A second autopsy had been scheduled to be conducted on the deceased's body, but that has also been postponed, awaiting the homicide team from Nairobi that is expected to take over the case Friday. Brenda Wanga, Citizen TV. So another story now, the National Council of Churches of Kenya, NCCK, Jumuiya Hospitals and the digital fundraising platform, Saidika, have signed an MOU to fundraise to help needy students who have failed to join Form 1 due to lack of school fees. The program invites Kenyans to contribute one shilling, 50 cents of their airtime to raise school fees for the needy cases across the country by sending the word ELIMO to 29888 via SMS. According to statistics from the Ministry of Education, over 150,000 students who sat their KCPE examinations last year are yet to join Form 1 for lack of school fees. Saidika, a digital fundraising platform, responded to this call. Kenyans have the ability to actually donate at least a shilling and 50 cents, which is some, something that is very affordable for most of the people who are subscribed to Safaricom right now. And together with them, through this partnership, we believe that we can target the masses to at least uh, be the solution that we need to see. And the church has accepted to spread the Saidika gospel. As a church, we are looking forward to a way that we can be assisted to support as many children through the education. If we want to have a better church tomorrow, the strength of the community, let's emphasize on education. Through that one shilling and 50 cents, that we are going to contribute many, many children, not only girls, even boys, will benefit from this SIDCA. NCCK will use its countrywide network to raise awareness for the funds drive to rekindle hope for many students from less privileged families that are yet to join Form 1. The Rinjons will have a better and bigger share. Back. It's time for business and President William Ruto has reiterated his commitment to reviving the ailing sugar sector in the country. Speaking in Bungoma, Ruto said the government has written off the over 50 billion shilling debt owed by Nzoya Sugar Company while at the same time promising to pay farmers dues in the next two days. Denis Sotieno has more. As the government takes steps to revive the struggling sugar sector, Ken farmers are keenly waiting for the promised results. Speaking in Bungoma during a meeting with Nzoia Sugar Cane Farmers, the president said his administration has already cleared the company's debts. Ile deni ya bilioni hamsini na kitu, 52, 53 billion, ambaye likuwa nadaiwa kampuni yenu ya Nzoia, tumeifutilia mbali kama serikali, hamuna deni tena. Kampuni yenu is free. Tumefanya hivyo kwa kampuni ya miwani, Tumefanya hivyo kwa kampuni ya Muhoroni, tumefanya hivyo kwa kampuni ya Sony, tumefanya hivyo kwa kampuni ya Chemeli. Iyo deni yote ilikuwa bilioni miyamoja na kumi na saba. The president noted that past attempts by previous administrations to write off the debts had failed, impacting negatively on the operations of the sugar companies. That is why niliwaambia I will write off Madeni ya hizi kampuni. Serikali tatu imejaribu ku write off. They did not succeed. Besides the waiver, the president also promised to settle the farmers' deals by Saturday. Pesa imekuja hapa. Niko na hundi hapa ya pesa yenu. Pesa ya wakulima wote. Nikiondoka hapa. In the next two days, hakuna mkulima atakuwa anadai Mkulima wa hapa, kila mkulima atakuwa melipo.
Ruto's assurance to farmers comes days after a section of leaders from the Western Belt held a retreat in Masai Mara to discuss issues affecting the region. Denis Otieno, Citizen TV. The national government is banking on partnerships with private entities in far-flung areas in the counties to increase water provision to the masses. Speaking in Darakanide during the commissioning of the county's water project, Water Sanitation and Irrigation Cabinet Secretary Zachary Njeru said they are keen on having long-term collaborations. The project commissioned in Nkondi targets about 1,500 households and has 54 water points. The government is keen on implementing its national water sector investment plan to 2030. We will not let this project down. Governor na viongozi wamefanya jambo lao, wamepata development partners. Kwa hivyo letu kama wanainchi, ni kutunza na kuhifadhi na kushikilia kwa makini sana huu mradi. Our biggest challenge is not just water, because we have water in the river, in the rivers, because we have a lot of 13 rivers that transverse this county. Our biggest water is, um, the biggest problem is availing that water to the nearest point to the Mwanainchi, so that we can stop Mwanainchi from using their quality time that it have, they would have used to do other, other jobs or other chores. Standard Chartered Bank has released its global market outlook for the year 2024, which projects a favorable rebound in the American economy that will set in motion a snowballing effect for the frontier market, noting that in the early uh, parts of 2024, the macro environment will continue to improve, backed by a softening monetary policy. The lender is also projecting that the equity market will offer investors better yields in the year based on the market, even as they remain bullish uh, that the U.S. market and the Japanese market will remain dominant in equities. Stanchard says it will closely monitor the bond market, which stands to benefit from an improved macro environment. Should U.S. growth slow more significantly, that's an environment where high-quality bonds can indeed perform uh, even better. So we think that combination of favoring high-quality equities, uh, global equities, particularly with the preference for you know, U.S. and Japan, as well as uh, developed market investment-grade bonds, that combination uh, with the preference over cash uh, is, is sort of the way we look to implement uh, our 2024 outlook. We are very excited to launch our 2024 global market outlook that help inform our clients in terms of the overall investing landscape, how it's shaping up, and where our clients and investors can take opportunities in terms of managing and growing their wealth in this year. Basketball team coach Grant Wallace is expected in the country next week and will be with the team for two weeks before the start of the Afro basketball qualifiers on the 19th of February. The Morans have 16 players in non-residential camp from the 20 called up three weeks ago. Two players dropped out due to injuries while two did not own the call-ups. Coach Cliff War has called on stakeholders to help in bringing in the five diaspora-based players who are having challenges linking up with the squad. The technical bench is expected to trim the squad further before the arrival of the head coach. The Afro -bas basketball qualifiers will be held between the 19th and the 27th of February. The Morans are now putting the final touches in their preparations. In those two weeks, we've been working on our transition offense uh, majorly because the game is uh, quite high paced. So we've been working so hard on our transition offense and the players are responding well to it. Other than that, this week we've covered uh, uh, some on uh, our zone and man-to-man uh, -man defense. The 2024 WRC Safari Rally will be held over the Easter holidays in Ivasha, Nakuru County, with minimal changes made to the routes used in the 2023 edition. The only major change is the prize giving that will be done after the last stage, the power stage at Hell's Gate. Previously, the crews were, would go back to the service park after the power stage. Now, the reason we haven't made so many changes is because uh, the time frame moving the dates to Easter reduced for us. 
So it's last time to organize the event. Where in the past, we've had 11, 12 months to, uh, to actually work on the, on the event. We've had a few months less this time around. The 2024 National Novices Boxing Championship got off to an explosive start with boxers from 18 teams in action at the Green Park Bus Park Hall, Uhuru Park, Nairobi. The preliminary rounds opened the action with a total of 52 bouts on the cards. The flyweight category had a huge turnout with 20 bouts in the preliminary round. Uh, there were 11 bouts in the featherweight and another 10 bouts in the light welterweight category. No team has, oh, no rather, no team was dominant on day one of three. The championship will conclude on Sunday. 178 boxes have been entered across all categories.